All right. Hey, everyone. This is Bram Kanstein, and you're listening to Bitcoin for Millennials. Together with my guests on this podcast, I go on a journey to discover how our current financial system works, why it's flawed, and why Bitcoin is the most relevant technology that you should understand and adopt. In this episode, I'm joined by Michael Dunworth. He's the co-founder of Wire Payments and the brother of Peter Dunworth, who was a guest in my second episode. So check that out if, uh, if you didn't yet. And in my opinion, you know, Michael, you're one of the craziest and smartest brains that I follow in this space. And so I'm really looking forward to our conversation. I mean, you're into mathematics, cryptography, thermodynamics, all at the same time. So I think this conversation will probably fry my brain, but I'm super happy that you're here. So yeah, thanks mine's for coming fried on. too, so let's get it going. Thanks so much <laughs> for having me. I really appreciate yeah. it. Thanks for coming on, man. I loved, uh, we just talked off mic, like I loved that. You know, when you talk to other people who are into Bitcoin and who get it, like you just connect on a certain level, despite your experience or skills or personal other yeah. interests. And that's just super fun. And you know what? I reckon that this is going to be like, let's say Bitcoin does what it's what we think it can do. Right. Which is, you know, mm. become the biggest, the coolest, the whatever thing in the world. Like. <laughs> Everyone is going to go through, you know, we talked about these transformations that the mind goes through as you start mm. observing Bitcoin more and more in its behavior. And it's like the, it's like when you stare in, like staring into the orb or the abyss, it starts staring back at you almost and you start picking up its identity in a way. I feel like because like if you praise your money and you love, like if we've been conditioned to love money and need money and only want to get money and all that, well, if a really damn good money comes along, we can't break it. We didn't make it. So we're probably yeah. going to start worshipping it. Like exactly. that's basically what happens with the sun. Like we worship the sun because it's a really big energy thing that we can't control. So mm -hmm. because we can't control it, every person from ancient Egyptians to everyone, we all worship the sun. Now, yes. now we have a modern day version of worshipping <laughs> it, which is called, oh, you know, stare at the sun. You've got Andrew Huberman and all the podcasts about how healthy sunlight is. You know, you've got sunlight is now not considered you know a vitamin it's considered a hormone almost because it's like we're thinking sunlight is so astronomically good for us so our understanding of everything is changing but but um i, I find like bitcoin will do it changes us because the highest energy source of anything it's like we subconsciously as humans right if you walk past a really tall building you go whoa you think your brain said, hey, look up and look at that? No, no, no. That's all that's happening. Your brain is the gravity of that building is pulling your head towards it. True <laughs> yeah. story. In the same way, when we when we see energy being displaced, our, our senses are there to pick that up as a defense mm -hmm. mechanism and as an intelligence mechanism. So our, our minds and are And then drawn. The, the sun is the ultimate source of of energy for life then it, right it's absolutely it's the, yeah. we cannot nothing happens here unless that guy still wakes up for work and that guy meaning the same exactly uh, <laughs> so two things today i saw there's plans to spray shit in the air to block the sunlight for uh, climate change or whatever i think we can both yes. agree that's the stupidest thing ever. here's the thing you know what yeah. i've got a thing on climate change right I, everyone's like climate change is bullshit and i'm like no it's not it is 100 percent real but our understanding of why it occurs is way mm. off i think like if you think of the earth right like every time we go every tesla car or whatever it is it's got to have cobalt and shit like that in it cobalt is this big active ingredient that we're trying to yeah. get away from because yes. it's the core of all the lithium ion batteries you've got little four-year-olds mining in the Congo and all that and, shit, and yeah, $5 yeah. a year, like all that shit, it's fucked. Horrible. But that's the source of renewable battery power for the most part. And so that's not renewable. That's like a subsidy from the earth. Like if you think about it, because we need, it's not indefinite, like it's not a solution. So we think about that, it's like um, it will run out. And so now with like electricity and stuff, we're sort of, we're, we're busting up. If the earth is a giant magnet flying through space, right? Imagine the uh, magnetic field wrapping around it like a comet tail. Mm -hmm. If you're busting up that magnet, like imagine I gave you a handheld pool ball that's that big and it's a magnet, and then you start whacking it with a hammer and little chink, 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 its magnetic field will change. 
you know it. Like you can know that. Like if I had two broken magnets, it's yeah. going to have a different magnetic field. So our Earth is like this ball, and we're busting the crust up, which changes the magnetic composition of this metal ball. And I think that would be something that fucks with the weather because the weather is responsible. The weather is a product of the magnetic field of the Earth. So I would have thought that that was a thing, but. Either way, I think it's mindful for, like, we need to be mindful. Like, you know, everything change, like when we make subtle changes in, in our, in our ecosystems, it has astronomically wild effects. So, you know, we, we've seen things where it's like, you take one small uh, bug out of an ecosystem yeah, 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 and yeah, the whole yeah. ecosystem collapses in like five yeah. years and you go, oh, yeah. I didn't realize that this dude ate him. And then on weekends, the other bugs ate him and, you know. So just understanding the broad strokes of the system first before we kind of jump into anything. And that's why I think like the whole climate change thing right now just looks like noise to print, like to print more money. Like yeah, it's what I find looks- fascinating is that yeah. literally what you just said, like everything is connected. It's so intricate, right? Yep. There is roots from the Amazon when mixed together, they work on receptors in our body and like yeah. uh, original penicillin came from... Yeah. Uh, fungi or mycelium and stuff stuff like that and yeah. and then maybe that's a nice leeway <laughs> segue into money yeah. i feel that because well at least talking for the western world right because yeah. we have quote unquote money and we are quote unquote rich we can mm. change and do anything i feel like that is you know like the the, the way that people started operating yeah and therefore even though currently, you know, the money is broken as, as, as we both think. Mm. And of course, it's what we talk about here on the, on the podcast. We still yeah. believe that. We still think that we can change nature or how nature works and with all the inc- in, intricacies, mm. that we can change that with our broken <laughs> manufactured money. Like, it, it's so uh, spiritually oh, flawed in it, a sense. It is right? so <laughs> flawed. Like, it is yeah. so flawed. And let me just say something like, it's, yeah, our money is, it's so broken. Like, it's just, it's so unnatural. That's it. It's unnatural. Exactly. It's made, and, made and, up. <laughs> and I don't blame anyone, by the way, because you've got to think, if you met someone from 1985 today, they would be, like, if a 50-year-old man, the smartest 50-year-old man from 1985 showed up and spoke to a 15-year-old today, the 15-year-old would probably have the same amount of information that the guy yes. from 1985 had. They're just yeah. information propagation is astronomically high. So we, yes. we know all the answers pretty quickly soon. So you look at that. They constructed an old monetary system. Look, they had a crack. Everyone, like we said before the podcast, no one asked to be born. Everyone got born without choice. So those guys came into a system and they built it up. And mm. to be honest, that's the system. They, they won the game. They're winning the game, right? Like, um, But I think it's important to think like, well, what can happen after the game? Because money's not the end of it. Money, you can't ever finish it money. Like life doesn't finish it money because Mm. we're an energy field. So money's not even in the equation. Money we only invented because we don't have infinite energy. Money is a way to break down the finite amounts of energy that we have on this planet and divvy them up and create an economy. So I think right now it's like that money Money, it's the ta- money is the tail wagging the dog, meaning it's influencing everything else. When everything else in your life should influence the money you spend, it's actually the money is influencing everything yes, you do in exactly. your life. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Mon- money is hard. Like money is like a video game, and you've got to keep playing it to basically stay in the game. And unless you hit it out of the park really early, um, it's like this perpetual motion machine, it feels like. It's like, why do, why would I, it's like, imagine you go and buy a toaster and, well, I don't know how to give it an example, but it just sort of is like a hamster wheel. It's like, there's no destination. Well, we talked about it off mic, like how yeah. you are put in a box and you yeah. can only, li- and, and in the box, you have to Money's accumulate the, box, yeah. the money or something. Yeah. But, and once you have enough, whatever yeah. is enough for anyone, yep. you can escape the box. Yes. And then you have the time to, Cause maybe this is dramatic, but like really be yourself or, oh, you know, no, no, no. Uh, as, as no, no, we no, are no, going to. Not even being dramatic at all. Absolutely. Think about yeah. every, let's imagine that thoughts, you know, thoughts create reality and stuff. And every thought that I have produces an action that I'll do. So let's add the, every single thought up in my life of doing anything. It's like, how many of those do you think money had to be considered in that thought 
Oh, oh man, Lots. yo, come meet you and hang out. Uh, oh, let's go on a holiday. Oh, let's eat dinner. Oh, let's go this. The, anything. And it's like, mm. if you take it out and it's like, hey, dude, imagine having every single thought and money you didn't have to think about. It's like, yeah. Whoa! It's like a. Oh, that's whole, a great segue. That's a great a segue into Bitcoin. New filter. <laughs> yeah. You can watch everything in life now mm-hmm. from a different lens, and it's yes. like, and so Bitcoin gives you that certainty of money. It's almost like buying. Um, well, it removes the lens. Actually, power generator. It feels like an unbreakable power generator mm-hmm. for my home, which means I'm not going to have to think or worry about will my home have yeah. power. So you don't so have you, a lens anymore. There's no lens. It, it, there's no lens. There's no, there's lens, no lens because the, lens the layer on which you operate is yeah. fair. Yeah. And that little box, like when we're talking about you being put in a box, it's like you come out of you know your mum's vagina or whatever, and you go straight into this box which says, "Hey, I need you paying taxes. I need you getting smart. I need you figuring <laughs> yeah. out how to add value to this place of a planet." And yeah. so you kind of like the whole way that box. When you say you will escape money if you have enough, the problem is that box is only you're jumping out of this money box, right? That you get put in. That box is only as high as you say it is. And most people don't even mm. set a definition on how high it is, which meant what I'm getting at is the metaphor is sort of, if you don't have a destination of how much money you want to make or whatever, then you are never going to finish making money. You, yeah. you're, you're driving around circles in the track. And let me tell you, it's like beyond money, not that I know, I'm, I'm going to, you know, it's not like money's finished for me, but Bitcoin finishes money for me because I, can't, I just can't see uh, how it doesn't do that for everyone. So I'm sort of backing that. I'm taking a leap of faith on that, obviously. Um, but in the same way, it's like, you know, if you don't set the goal of what is enough, then you won't ever have a goal. Then you won't ever have enough. So, you know, comparison is the thief of joy, which means if I'm always chasing, if my goal in life is to be better than that nemesis that I've had, then I'm just going to keep, you know, you buy, you buy the house, you buy the car, you do this, you do that. And it's like, you've been comparing yourself to someone else. It's like, no, no, no set a number on what's enough for you and then go pursue all the other passions. Money is like this weird cock block that's come into your life at age 15 and now it's leaving. But I think that's really important for people to have that reset moment. I think it's even more important. It's really actually quite sad is that nowadays in our life, it's like most people, if you go up to them and say, I can give you, let's say 200, I'll solve money for you. $200 million you get and you get three, four years $200 $200 million, infinite amount of money. Go do every single thing you need to do. Oh, I need to do this. I need to, I need to fly to Norway. I need to, <laughs> to see the Northern Lights. I need to do Antarctica. Yeah. Tick every motherfucking box, bro. Every single box. Now, now you are 40 years old. You've had four years doing whatever. You ticked every box. The earth still has 40 years left for you. What are you going to get done now? And now yeah. that is... That's when it starts. You know, Mark Twain, great quote. I think it's Mark Twain. Uh, Two most important days of your life, the day you're born and the day you find out why. And it's sort of, that's where you go. When you fi- if you can finish money and get your mind to a place of creativity, this isn't hogwash bullshit. Uh, yeah, yeah, finger painting. I mean, like every person is a superhero. Every single one of us. Like not even like a, oh yeah, they're really, no, no, no. Everyone has the Michael Jordan of something. Everyone is the Michael Jordan of something or the Tiger Woods of something. Like, but the problem is when there's so much noise in your life, because every decision is being, you know, filtered by noise and ads and money and this pressure and stress and cortisol levels and all this shit, you forget what your Michael Jordan can be. You forget who you can be the Michael Jordan of or what you can be the Michael Jordan of because Mm -hmm. you have forgot your dreams. Um, And so I think it's important, like, you know, the best dreamers are the kids. And so if we always think back like, well, who was I when I was little? What did I like or why did I like it? And, you know, I found heaps of interesting stuff when I sort of did that journey myself. When I I was, I moved back during COVID, I was just a bit wobbly. So like after moving back from America, um, you know, I was trying to find sort of ways to reorientate myself because I felt like I'd gotten lost through COVID and through, you know, all this, just everything going on in, during the world. And I was like, well, okay, around, you know, 14 or 15, a couple of things start happening in your life and things start sort of squiggling off the tracks, maybe. So I was like, okay, well, let's go before then. What does the 10-year-old dude like? And it's like, oh, how immature. It's like, fuck that immature. Go suck my dick. Like not being rude, but it's like, 
I want to, this is the dude I'm working for, bro. Like the young kid that had dreams. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. For you, you fucking spastic. <laughs> and so you imagine your 10 year old self and you're like, all right, what's this cat like? Yeah, my 10 year old self really liked, uh, well, like the water and like numbers and like, uh, video games. Because there was something, you know, maybe that's my coping mechanisms on stuff. Sure, it's fine. But, you know, you get to explore that stuff and just sort of come back with an adult lens, right? So it's like you see gamers that come back after ages and they play and it's like, or, you know, people that loved it, who were passionate about maybe piano when they were little and then they come back and play it when they're older and they've got more time to honour their craft. Or maybe they are a painter and they, you know, they started working at Goldman Sachs 18 hours a day and then they now have to now they're retired they go back to painting you know it's like they can go back to honor their gift uh in a way so i don't know but i think the world is bitcoin is helping so many people slow down in their thoughts it's like oh there was so much noise i was chasing everything i was rushing to calendar meetings i was rushing to have yeah. more calendar meetings and i was rushing to get that promotion i was rushing to figure out the next thing and i'm rushing here i'm rushing to and you've just compromised every original thought that your brain could manifest during that time because you're having you're having the thoughts of other people, not yourself, because you're constantly being the entrop like just the amount of thought time. You're not thinking about your own shit because you're not sitting in solitude by yourself. If you mm. think about solitude as solitude is this really sort of scary thing to us in this day and age, I think, because we are yearning for connection. And I think we're yearning for connection even more because we have less physical connection. So it's like we're getting a small drug hit by seeing each other, you know, on FaceTime. That doesn't give the oomph of an electromagnetic field when I hug someone and our two electromagnetic signatures connect. Now, we think very surface layer as a species, we thought, oh, we've digitized face and voice and audio. So it's <laughs> yeah. basically the same as being there. No, 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 no. You haven't digitized any magnetic field. You haven't digitized any of that. The tor toroidal fields around us that capture our energy and express our energy and stuff. When you hug someone or whatever it is, you entangle those mm. signatures, the magnetic signatures. Right. I ain't getting any digital hugs on this thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I can send in, you a high five. <laughs> yeah, emoji. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, oh, cool. They sent an emoji. It's like, like, like yeah. that changes anything. It's so, still an abstract of, of, of the It's always thing. an I'm, abstract, you know? Exactly. While you're and going so, through this, I'm thinking about what's the, I think it's, uh, I think it's Confucius. Yeah. Uh, like the every man has two lives and the second starts when he realizes he only has one like that is yeah, yeah, what yeah. i'm thinking about around this like and it's just yeah and, and it's also that is, yeah oh no i was just gonna say you know uh a man never steps in the same river twice for it's not the same man and it's not the same it's not river. the same river yeah yeah no i love that yeah. and what i love is that i think we have to realize that this happens to anyone Right, anyone has that that exact experience, and yes. you know, to I love how your mind works. It's so interesting. Like how if we go back to Bitcoin, like that that we just talked about. There's all this. So everyone has this journey, always. I think that's never ending, right? Yeah. But the fact that we are influenced by these external factors that were made up by other people that also have this journey, little, little by the way. Yeah, yeah, it's it's extra distraction on a journey that's already super hard in general, yes. right? Yes. And yes. before we dive deeper into the numbers and stuff, like what when we when we talk about you know how Bitcoin equalizes that and that that could be a base layer that we can operate from, so that mm. the space in which we operate as humans, um, yeah, that that we see that differently, like. What was to go, to go back to your Bitcoin journey? What was your aha moment there? Because I also know that you orange pilled your brother, which is interesting. So <laughs> no, it took him he, a long time. You know, like how? It's long? funny. It's funny because he's so much smarter than at this stuff than me. So once he got it, he kind of unpacked it to the nth degree, right? And so yeah, he yes, really yes. kind of, you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like he's really kind of done his homework on everything, which I love because it's very complimentary, and I'm lucky to have that to dialogue the bounce off. Mm. I think the biggest aha moment for me was 
uh, from a security perspective. So I used to mm-hmm. run, uh, you know, Bitcoin, or I used to run Wire, which was this, you know, an infrastructure provider and a very, very big one. And one of the scariest things was always, I learned from my team was always about security, not your keys, not your coins. So when you have people's assets on hand, that is their livelihood. So you don't think yes. about, oh, is it some dude that's just deposited in whatever? Like if you give that person a face and you feel the weight of the work, they might have worked 40 hours a week to save this money that's in that account that we're custodian. Like you're responsible to keep their money safe and you're also responsible to keep their identity safe. So we're getting attacked from for the KYC information and for the money. They're both as valuable as each other. Like KYC information is just as valuable as a private key to someone else, to someone somewhere. So you have to treat them the same. You can't sort of make them mutually exclusive. Like, oh, it's just the KYC information that got leaked. It's like, you don't know. Like that's none, that's not your call to make a judgment, you know, a judgment like that. So, um, but that taught me a lot about security and my team, I'm very fortunate. I worked with the best in the world on security, in my opinion. And they taught me that you know, nothing matters unless you have security. And, that, and that's, not a, that's not a loose statement. That's a very definitive one, which means you don't have anything unless it's secure. Whether that is uh, money in the bank, whether that is a emotional relationship, but we always think emotional security, financial security, you know, all physical security, that is all what it comes down to. And so for me, that was the aha moment when I realized, well, hold on, Bitcoin is the most secure thing though then. It has to be, right? Like, because we can't break it. And then I'm like, oh, well, if it's only built on math, then it's got no dependencies really other than the ingredients that are used to build it. So that's really good from a security standpoint. The it's numbers. Not like, huh? Yeah, you got to like, oh, it's only numbers. It's not like, oh, there's a third party API to some, you know, mm. random provider. Um, and so that's really interesting. But yeah, if you have something, the most secure thing in the world, I was like, that, how could I use, like, how can I protect everyone using that thing? Because no one can break that. And I was mm. like, oh, anyway, so that just sent me down a rabbit hole. And I was like, well, what is the most secure piece of information in the world? Like, how do you, what is the most secure? Is it something cryptographically secure? I'm like, no, nah, it can't be. And it ended up landing on time locks on Bitcoin, that that is the most secure thing on quite literally Earth. Um, and so there's no yeah. protocol that we have to break that. We'll and talk so- about your uh, your article yeah. about that. But you ended oh, up no, there. No. That's very interesting. Like, be- Does because that of make course- sense? Do you see how that journey comes together? Well, I mean, it's from your point of view, right? Yeah. And I think what is interesting that a lot of people have different touch touch points yeah. based on experience, understanding, interest, time, yeah. uh, you know, wh- whatever. And then, yeah. well, y- yeah, you get it or you don't, and then you're interested to continue or you don't. And then if you are, then, yeah. yeah, you know, like it's yeah. that's the rabbit hole, I think. But I find yeah. it interesting that you say the the security, right? Because that is the the the, the, the trifecta of cho- well, the choice you need to make, right? There's a, a security, speed, and decentralization, and Bitcoin, yeah. Bitcoin is designed around m- more around the decentralization and uh, the security rather than the speed, right? So yeah. everything then- that came after Bitcoin, which we call crypto, right? <laughs> Is trying to compete on all that other stuff. Faster, cheaper, but, faster, cheaper, faster. Yeah, cheaper. exactly. But like, that's why I find it interesting that, that, you, faster, that you, like, yeah, yeah, that you but pull it's out. Not, it's pointless if it's not secure. Exactly. But yeah, nothing matters. And I've, yeah. I have to deal with people that have got hundreds of millions of dollars that are managing money for other investors, and they have to. They try and tell me that security is a secondary consideration. I'm like, yeah, that's no, that's not like, logical. No, they, they, you <laughs> obviously don't understand how anything works, so that's fine. <laughs> Okay, like it's bonkers. And so when you look at, if I can only have two, right? Let's say this trilemma, which is security. Mm, a trilemma, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what is it? Is it security? I said and, trifecta. Yeah, <laughs> the trifecta. trilemma. <laughs> yeah, so what yeah, is speed, it? Security, speed, speed, decentralization. decentralization. Yeah. Okay, so let's say you get to pick three of those. You get, you get, you got to rank them, right? Well, first security, because we can't have anything unless it's secure. And now it goes, well, I, do I want speed or decentralization? Now, if I just have to make these choice, this choice as a person in human human nature, and I want to plan for the long term, is speed important to everyone now, or is decentralization more important? And so I'd say decentralization is more important because it's a newer property that we don't have. We already have faster, cheaper. We have instant payments, but we just do it on a centralized ledger. Faster ain't helping anyone. Faster is making me keep up with this old world of 
fast paced consumerism. No, I don't want that. I want to stop and collect my thoughts and walk in a patient manner. Do you know what I mean? Like, and the Bitcoin blockchain, because you well, can't it has make to it, keep going, basically. It has That's to keep the point, going, right? The but point it makes is, you it, yeah. think in like a more pragmatic, like a longer term way almost, mm. where it's like, well, hold on, why are you rushing? And it's like, and you start being like, well, no, what is the rush? 10 minutes, why, why am I so in a rush that 10 minutes is too long for me to wait? And what value prop are you bringing me where it's not as secure, but you're saying it's faster? It's like, well, that's... You're it's a missed. bad trade-off, actually. No, also, it's not, a, it's not right? a bad trade-off. It's a scientifically, factually, statistically significant, undeniable trade-off, which means it's mm. not my opinion. This is as concrete as the sun yeah, rising tomorrow. Exactly, like, yeah. You never I, trade security for anything. It is exactly. uncompromisable. So this is where people are going to start learning everything really quickly, which is if you don't have security, you don't have it. And now that means is the only thing that matters is security because everything else that you are looking at, thinking about, blah, 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 it will turn to dust. It's ephemeral if you don't yeah. know how to secure it or your thoughts aren't securing it. So I just think security became the the undeniable, you know, granddaddy of everything. And it basically becomes the only area of study that's almost necessary. If yeah. you know security, then you don't need to know anything else because everything always is led by security. Every action is always led by security, whether it's hacking whether it's doing things whether it's not doing things whether it's securing that everything comes back to security and so yeah. security is the the leading indicator of what happens with everything and so right now that's why you know looking at numbers for example prime numbers to me i find i always thought what's the answer to this question an alien species comes down from the heavens and they say we need you we we humanity gets to express one thing to them that they would be able to probably understand or hopefully understand. Uh -huh. And also we can express how far through technology we are, like how advanced we are, right? So let's say this is super alien thing. So they come to us and they say, oh, we're not going to be like, oh, look at this microwave. It heats up arbitrary shit that we invented. And it, they'd be like, <laughs> yeah. what the fuck are you talking about? They wouldn't say, oh, show us a boat. They'd be like, oh, cool, a boat, whatever the fuck, you're floating on water, a plane. They'd be like, come on, like we need to see how far you guys are ahead. Not how many cool tools you built relative to yourselves. Mm -hmm. And the first, the only thing that they would be able to resonate with, because the only thing we know for certain that is also going to be in perceivable by another species elsewhere, like in yeah. another part of the universe, is numbers. Because every species will have to observe symmetry based on the way that the universe works. So they always have numbers. And now because we know that well, what's the toolbox numbers? Uh, well, what's special about numbers? Well, prime numbers are the most special ones because prime numbers are the leading indicator of technology. So whatever the biggest known primes are, look at the technology chart of, you know, growth in technology or computation power. Mm -hmm. Primes are always the most, the first thing that we always try and we're trying to break the ceiling on those. And I think that's going to be our yardstick. Because that's calculations, right? It's to calculation. Like... It's deterministic. Yeah. It's predictable. But it's also like the reason why they would ask about primes is because there's no pre-mine arbitrary bullshit. They know that the universe gave primes and there's no pre-mine to it. Like there's no special like, oh, we yeah, invented you cannot make it up. <laughs> every, every, it's Because yeah. it's, 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 primes are the smallest prime numbers in the number line are essentially mm. like blocks in the blockchain exactly like it's work. it is true or not what you it say is true, is true or not, or not. yes exactly. validate it's like if i'm a miner let's say i'm mining it's like i look at a number and you go hey that number's prime and i go hmm let me check yep that's prime just the same way as the miners go hmm this is a valid block and they go hmm let me check yep makes sense yeah you know once so can I take one step back to the security? Yeah, 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 of I, course. I, I just looked up, actually, uh, two, two things. I just looked up, I saw a tweet l last week of a guy, Ryan McGuinness, apparently. He calculated what uh, an attack, a 51% attack on Bitcoin would cost, right? Because mm -hmm. that, maybe for also people listening who... who um, don't know or I haven't learned about this yet, right? Like the, the mm -hmm. entire security point of Bitcoin is uh, the goal of that is that a it just it keeps going, 
Yeah. One. And yeah. two, that no one can attack it long enough uh, uh, for yeah. them to it's change the, en the entries in the ledger, right? Yes. So to fake more Bitcoins, to have double spending, etc. Mm. So that's basically how you um, could, how do you say, exploit the network, yep. right? When you have control, you can make more Bitcoins, basically, or at least have double entries so you can own more Bitcoins. So yeah. that's called a 51% attack, right? If you own uh, or can control 51% of the network. And I just looked it up. It's actually very cool. Like the hash rate, the computing power oh. of the network, oh 546 God. million uh, in what did we express that? I think that. Uh, exahash? It doesn't say. Well, yeah. I think it's exahash, yeah. I think well, it would be, yeah. That's he a, calculates how much you need. Dude, he, that is you, like. <sighs> yeah, it calculates how much you need. You need, well, you need 10 minutes. Yep. At least 10 minutes or at more least, yes. to change it. It it will cost 1.3 billion per minute, a 51% attack. So it'll cost you 13 billion. Get printing, and, baby. <laughs> yeah. And so it costs 80 billion an hour, 1.9 trillion for the day. <laughs> dude, dude, imagine hiring a dude that charges $80 billion an hour for security. That's yeah. what Bitcoin is. If, if it costs that exactly. much. Exactly. And that so, is literally the dude you're hiring for your security policy. Exactly. He's got a bribery yes. amount and he will only work for someone else if he's paid $80, $80 billion in 10 Yes, exactly. Quarter. So. That's the one thing I wanted to say about this attack. And the second I, I want to talk about, so if we talk about the reasoning, kind of like the sequencing of reasoning when we start from security and, and then talk about Bitcoin, right? So when we say, well, Bitcoin is secured by the biggest computational, combined co computational power in the world. Yeah. There, therefore, we make sure that a, it keeps going. B, well, no one <laughs> stays honest. With, uh, uh, yeah, well, no one can attack it. Yes, so it stays honest, right? So it's kind of like this self-incentivized and controlling, almost, uh, yeah. How would you say that? Like a uh, um, entity. entity. <laughs> yeah, and the I, I believe like, it there, is. There's I like really multiple believe. multiple feedback loops. That like also well, roll over into each other, basically. Well, well I, I started this reason. Like, how would you? Yeah. What's the sequencing in your head? How, how yeah, you would it, talk through it's, that? It's, it's identical to protein folding, like literally in nature. Like, so the in nature, the universe is a doubling circuit, which means basically, like double everything doubling as fast as possible. Bitcoin. What are we waiting for in six months' time? What's coming up, Bram? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the half. The well, we are doubling. Yes, exactly. We're yeah. halving. So. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin is the opposite. So every bit of energy in nature is like this doubling circuit. Now imagine you've got a doubling circuit getting compressed into a halving circuit, right? So, mm. so mm. you've got energy that is doubling like this, but you've got a fire exit that's getting narrower and narrower, and it's all got to squeeze through that. So I think I heard some, I think it was Joe Burnett the other day said something about you know, you've got to feed the fire hose through the tip of a needle now. Like that's what's happening as exactly. the block is yeah. getting smaller, the energy, man. That compression is just gnarly. And so I think that's so cool to think about. It's like, well, what have we got here? And what, how much energy is it going to keep eating? And, you know, will it stay alive forever? And when you think about like the simplicity of it is just, just keep going. That's all you got to do. Just keep yes. going. And so all it does, it folds on itself and it takes all, if we think of each block. And like deliver moment, on the promises also, right? Like so course, keep going, deliver on yeah, the promise. Yeah, exactly. And so if we think about each block almost like a moment or a memory, you know, in our brains, our, you know, if you, let's say you have a traumatic experience, that can affect your future memories, right? You, it, you remember it and it affects, mm -hmm. just like, me making a transaction in this block now will affect the miner's chance of finding the hash because my number in my address is going to be different. And so it's all this like, you matter. Just by, just by sending a transaction on the blockchain, you should get a thank you letter from every Bitcoin miner because they only found that block because your transaction was in it. They would have had to find a whole yeah. new different block because your transaction wasn't there. So you matter. You know, if you've got no purpose in life, <laughs> you are validated. Send a Bitcoin, yes. send a Bitcoin transaction. <laughs> You matter, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you are recognized. Well, it's, I, I find it interesting. And the point. buyers should be thankful. Hey, thank you for letting us find that. Yeah, block. exactly. No worries. You're welcome yeah, anytime, yeah. guys. 
And you so know? the security part was your aha moment, but like, what were your, did you also have misconceptions? Like a lot of people don't get a uh, Bitcoin on the first uh, <laughs> attempt. Oh, no, no, basically. no. This is, by the way, my aha moment came, like I was, I built this, uh, you know, with the team, we started this company in 2013. And so I learned about Bitcoin in probably 2012, but for that was from like a video game perspective. And so mm. I thought it was cool, like novelty, but I was like, yeah, whatever. Like, it's fun. It's a novelty. Like that, but it's cool, but it's, I didn't think it was like overthrow the government. I thought it was kind of like, oh, mad. Okay. So my Street Fighter currency coins can play <laughs> with my Warcraft coins or Warcraft coins and I can transfer those to another game. And I just thought it was going to become this sort of digital gaming currency. Um, but, you know, we built Wire for a long time and it wasn't until maybe after the th second or third, no, the second bull run um, in 2018 or 19, we did a lot of, we worked a lot with the the other, you know, assets in the space. We'd never, never touched any other assets until about 2018. I think it was 2017 mm -hmm. when we finally listed different assets beyond Bitcoin. But they were never worth listing because they would always take so much engineering efforts to just to catch a flash in the pan. Like you see everyone come and go really quickly. They're like, oh, no, list this. Anyway, so long story short, after all this site of going up and down and understanding everything, I was like, well, what is the fuck? What is what the fuck's going on here? Like, what is the actual thing? And it's like I realized after the block size wars, I think that was probably the most important the most important I was so fortunate to have people on my team were in that moment. But like the block size wars, you know, you think startups and money and everything is it, right? You don't think about an idea being trumped by money and influence that much. Like, mm. so I'll give you an example, Coinbase and during the block size wars, all the big companies in the space, BitPay and Coinbase at the time, they had the biggest surface area of users, meaning the largest amount of end users that are, that are using the product. And so they had a very loud voice in saying that, well, we should go to this thing called Segwit2x and it was trying to make a compromise and all this sort of stuff. And I see the logic from it all, but um, what they didn't realize is that it doesn't matter how many people Coinbase has as users because a user doesn't count because a user is not running a node. And so that made me realize, oh, it's not about the startups. This is different because it's not because usually startups find something and they're like, it's oh, a level higher it. or 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 tree. <laughs> yeah. Pardon? It's a level or tree higher where oh, you have it to. It is. Think. It is. It totally transcends that. And I was like, yeah. oh, this isn't. This is like a public utility. Not. This isn't like a cool piece of tech. Like it's a. Don't treat it like a startup where it's going to be malleable and it's going to listen to feedback, right? Like because most startups, when you see new technology, you're like, oh, that's a cool app, but it'd mm. be better if it had X, Y, Z. And they, you know, next thing you know, features come out. This kind of, sort of just. It's a very echo chamber where it listens, and they're yeah. so data driven these apps. But Bitcoin wasn't like that. And I saw with the block size wars when Coinbase, BitPay, and every company, there was like, you know, 40 companies or something. And only three of them, I think, didn't sign. And I'm not very lucky that we, Wire at the time, I didn't really know sort of what was the block size wars and Segwit2x. I, I didn't, I wasn't the representative. I'm the, I was the CEO of our company, but we had smarter people. Uh, it was Guy, Richard, and Neil in our team who were basically our local maxis internally. And I was like, guys, this is the decision we're being put to as a company. Do we want to support, you know, uh, this this Segwit 2X or do we want to just say, fuck you? Not not fuck you, but just, nah, don't change anything. And yeah. they were like, they, they sat me down really patiently and really funnily, but they were like, no, no, no. You don't want that because of this. And they have full education. I was like, well, can you write the email politely saying, hi, we're not going to be participating in this. Thank <laughs> yeah. you for the offer. And at the time, like, you know, you're the CEO of a startup. And at the time, my dream was to build something that add value and everything. So I don't want to go against the grain with people that are very well educated on stuff. And so, you know, you always it's a delicate dance to understand new technology, but also to make sure you're not losing focus on what you originally started. So that was probably the biggest aha moment for me was realizing it's not another, Bitcoin's not another startup. It's not like another app on my phone. It looks like that to me because it's technology and it's cool and I like it. But mm. I had to realize, oh, no, 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 this is a whole different animal. And I realized when, when Coinbase and BitPay couldn't get through the Segwit2x thing, I was like, oh, wow, nothing matters in this world but the node runners. A end of story. End of story, no matter, I don't care how many people you have in Washington today, anywhere, nothing matters because a node is the only dude that can vote. 
No one else can. Yes. So mm. after real and call me a fucking idiot because I am a fucking idiot. I get I get things way slower than everybody. Like so, you know, I don't really know what uh what's what until way later down the track. I'm a repetition dude, just bang my head against the wall over and over. Um but <laughs> that was a big that was a big aha moment because then I realized that uh we I basically realized that no one's in control of this. And that is sort of exactly. that was sort of the everyone's talking about AGI and AI now. I was like no, 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 that, that is what the AGI is. Like Bitcoin is that. It's a distributed system that doesn't stop and all it is doing is vacuuming in the consciousness of humanity. Because we're such a money-driven society, it's like collecting all the receipts on everything we've ever done in life. And yeah. in that regard, like because it's all stamped on this ledger. And so- Yeah, that's, that's so me, fascinating, right? The, the, just, the, yeah, the entire blockchain is like 500 gigabytes. Oh, and it's man. all it's all numbers, yeah, and, and letters. And, you know, it's all yeah, text. It's so crazy. It's all, it is. Yeah. It is. It's fascinating. Um, but I think that was a decent aha moment. And then also, mm -hmm. you know, the that that led me to think, okay, well, Bitcoin's not going to break. I don't think it can break. And then I was like, well, what's it built on? And it's like, well, it's got no dependencies. It, like literally, it's like it's built on cryptography. It's built on mass. It's built on thermodynamics. It's not built on like oh you know some random stack oh it's like oh if you don't have aws you can't do it it's like dude this yeah, thing yeah. Is built on, <laughs> yeah it's built it's like a ghost it's built out of nothing and it's like you can prove this to yourself when you see go on youtube and watch someone mine a bitcoin block or try and do a hash mm -hmm. they basically do it manually with a pen and paper and when you realize that you can create a private key with a pen and paper you can send a transaction with a pen and paper. You can so do all the cryptography with a pen and paper. You start realizing this That's thing transcends. Math. Yeah, oh, it's dude. just math. And yeah, then it's you crazy. go, well, hold on. I thought this was some big influential thing. It's like, no, no, no. It's just numbers. All yeah. of it is just numbers. And it's like. So I think you would agree that Bitcoin is then a discovery and not an invention, probably. Absolutely. Because the, well, so the, the numbers the were already there. So here's the way that I think about that question, because people say, you know, is it a discovery or invention stuff? I always think of like, I, th I think this is how I think of it, but like inventions are where you assemble discoveries sort of thing. Mm. So, and that's like, I think, you know, maths is a discovery, cryptography is a discovery, thermodynamics or whatever it is, but it's the assemblement of these discoveries, it feels like. And that's what you call invention um, because you know, nothing's naturally discovered, I don't think. I think it's all comes from an inspiration, whether we can mm -hmm. see it ourselves or not. I think we're actually going to be able to see this a lot more in the future as we start having things like ChatGBT, which can connect the dots of very foreign topics very closely because it can find all the intricate relationships between yeah. two topics. So I could say someone like, hey, I'm a I'm a scuba diver plumber that fixes wells on the bottom of the ocean. Explain Bitcoin yeah. to me like I'm that guy. And it'll find ways to mm. explain Bitcoin in an analogy. And analogies yeah. as well, are, analogies are really powerful, I find, because they're like the ultimate translator. If I can find an analogy that you know, then I can relate everything to you really quickly. And it's like just adding another column in your database. But it's like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where I kind of got there, but I kind of got a bit rambled. But um, no, Like why, why uh, I, I said, I, I think you would agree that it's a discovery, but. Oh, yeah, yeah, would... yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think I think I think it is an invention based on you know like it's an assemblement of discoveries. Um, but theoretically, it is a discovery because all it is is a big, all that data in the blockchain is just a big long sequence of numbers, just like pi is basically. Like if we wanted yeah. to assemble it all like numbers, so it is you know in that capacity we have discovered it. Just like my you know Michelangelo, it's like you're both the sculptor and the you know the marble and the sculptor, whatever it is, mm. like where you are the if you've got a block of marble and there's a statue and is made out of it, then that statue was always in there. It was a permutation or a possibility of a number of tink, 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 tink. Yeah. Like, you know, the stonemason or whatever, but it was Just always depends on your sequencing or exactly. what you, your, your, yeah, your application. Your yeah. yeah. And it, it, yeah. I think it was uh, Heisenberg or yeah, maybe it was him, one of these physicists. He was like, um, basically everything came down like nature's, we can only evaluate nature's behaviors based on our lens or line of questioning in which we question nature. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't butcher that. The yeah, I love that. No, like it's, it's also in, uh, I think it's also in, um, I listened to a podcast with a guy who talked about quantum physics and how he actually ended up 
to the same conclusion as like um like eastern traditional like spirituality like what uh you know what our soul and spirit is and stuff but what ah, here we go this is it so yeah, sorry go for it. sorry Werner heisenberg but um what we observe is not nature itself but nature exposed to our method of questioning yeah exactly now the easiest way to say that is what we observe is not your public key it is your public key based on the algorithm which we look at through it so if yes, you think the of decoder keys, in some sense. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like mm. this number only makes sense in that context. So your private key is just a number. It doesn't mean and shit And it's to also, anyone. it has multiple it interpretations, means, right? Pardon? It has yeah. multiple interpretations if you don't have the right decoder. Like that's what I wanted to say in this podcast. I talked about how actually science, the science method is flawed in a way because yeah. like uh, this guy talked about how... Um, What's the what's the guy? What's his name again? Damn, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, no, no, no. The who traveled the world and uh, like uh, wrote about all the animals in the world? Jesus, what? most famous Hold person. <laughs> what Adam Rowe? No. Hold on. What the fuck? I'm so lost now. Hold on. Sorry. I'm sorry, dude. I'm fucking blind. <laughs> I'm thinking about. Oh my god. I to I'm totally drawing a blank. Like um. Okay. Ah, the guy on the ship with his diary and he looked at all the dodos and whatever, like, what the fuck? Why am I not coming up with his name? Which, uh, oh man, I don't know. I'm lost. All right. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> if I Google this name and I say this name, you're going to be like, you're an idiot. Well, I'll, I'll come up with the name, but he talked about yeah. like that observation is creation, right? So the lens through which you observe, right? You observe nature mm -hmm. and then, um, you see stuff happening and then you can describe what is happening. But once you create a certain law or like rule on it, then that is only your lens that you create yeah. that yes. thing. But yeah. if you look at, and in this conversation they talked about, there's all these laws of nature, rules of nature that we can observe. And we mm. can say like when A happens, B happens, then C happens but we don't understand why it happens, right? And so yeah. those are basically three different things, the observation, the creation, or the actual yeah. understanding of what is then behind that, right? Yeah. I still don't know the name. <laughs> that's so stupid. No, but I, I know, I know well. that idea. Like, um, yeah, there's a, that's a lot of talk about, you know, your thoughts create your reality and your reality, yeah. is, well, your, your thoughts create your personality and your personality is your personal yes. Reality, reality. Yeah, that's the lens in which you see things, and this is where it gets interesting because what what entrepreneurs do is they find a common lens that we all have and add value to that lens, so they make a better lens for all the people that use that specific lens. Let's say mm -hmm. photo sharing is a lens. Let's say money is a lens. But whatever it is, people are trying to make those lenses better. Uh, and so I think of entrepreneurs like, let's say. Albert Einstein, his work in science, everyone is adopted everyone has adopted that because it's not yeah. optional. It's got eight billion users overnight because it's a physics like it's a truth in the universe. So now if we start thinking about that, it's like you start thinking about the, the layers that we can go down. It's like, oh, well, if you go into maths and equations, if you make a beautiful equation for everyone to use for humanity that's a truth of the universe, then you've just given eight billion people you know, a new tool, like that's an instantly available tool to everyone Yeah, because it's a truth. It's instantly downloadable. So it's just like, imagine this neural link, right? Neural link is this brain chip in your head. It's like, okay, that's one way of thinking about it. But imagine I could give you an equation that helped translate everything around you instantly to understand it, not to know what it is. Like, oh, that's a fish. That's a this, because nothing is a fish. Nothing is a bear or whatever. It's that's all the labels we gave it. What's its energy? Mm -hmm. Like, show me its energy because its energy signature is what it really is. And so, um, I think I think we're becoming more more down the rabbit hole in that. And I think because as we get the world's getting very small, and we're right, like I don't know what everyone thinks. Like, last time I checked, I haven't seen any aliens driving past our planet. Like, if we think of our planet like a house, I haven't seen many aliens driving past our planet. So why the fuck are we all trying to kill each other? It doesn't even make any sense to me. No. 
<laughs> makes no sense. No, it's, I agree. It's legitimately retarded. And so how am I supposed mm. to respect the thoughts of people that we're, we're all trying to kill each other? It's like, what? Why are we dropping bombs on each other? Dude, we need their resources and they need you. It's like, you know, it would be way more efficient as a planet. It's all if- random, actually, like where we ended uh, up and where everyone yeah, exactly. ended up or what the it's borders like, oh, yeah, are. That guy, chose, <laughs> that guy chose to be there. You think he chose yeah, yeah. to be there? To be he born in uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's nonsense. Dude, yeah, it's, I agree. It's insane. Anyway, so I think we need to sort of start finding ways to work on the same team. And we've been mm-hmm. getting better at that as a species, um, you know, fortunately. The internet helped us all have one sort of central database, let's say, or reservoir or whatever that we can like mm. little like 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 in the Serengeti well, we or in can Africa, draw information from all it. All right? the animals yeah. go to the watering hole and they all share from the same watering hole. And they respect each other's boundaries and some get killed in the process and the crocodile snaps something. But it's like a common watering hole. That's like the internet. And so we have the common uh let's say the common telephone, the internet. Now we have the common language, which would be English. And that's not because it's the most spoken. It's because it's the second most spoken. Because if you're trying to find the most common thing somewhere, you never want to go to like, hey, what's the the highest number? It's like, no, no, no. If I randomly picked anyone, what's the most, most understood second language? Yeah. You know, what's the mm-hmm. most common second language? Well, we'll go for that because that's, if everyone's got the same backup, we'll go with the people that have got the same backup. Let's say my first language doesn't work and we'll go with the backup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, and then now we've got money. So we've got a language, we've got a database, and now we've got a ledger. Like we call it money, but it's just an energy ledger, really. So now as a species, we can all write to the same place. So we're building on the same foundation together. And I think that'll help bring us closer together because now we all realize like the internet made us feel much further away, but closer together in a way. Like I now know what, you know, uh, what's happening in, let's say, bombs are going off on the other side of the world. I know that and I can see multiple perspectives and angles and stuff because there's so much collaborative journalism from all this, you know, yeah. influences on social media and stuff. So you get more opinions. And I think as we're getting hyper-fed opinions, our brains are getting better at synthesizing all of it and drawing patterns. I feel like we're getting way better at pattern matching and we don't actually know it yet. Like our consciousness is growing like crazy and we're not really sure we don't. We can't really explain it. It feels like, um, but but yeah, dude. I think I think you know. It's funny. I think we're just about to enter the most exciting time in human history. I really do. We've got a lot of hard times ahead, but I think we're about to go into a straight up, like full on, ready to take on the universe, where we all sort of. This is a locker room talk type of a moment for Earth. Like we are. We are, we've gotten so good at harnessing interconnectivity that when you have interconnectivity on anything, it now means that everything has become one, which now means that's a single point of failure, right? So because we're all interconnected, we are now, we have things like new technology can can break the bank always instantly. So AI, right? This threat of AI can kill the, you know, kill the internet or maybe, you know, people breaking RSA encryption or all these kind of, they feel like game over moments, right? Mm -hmm. As we start getting closer to these moments as a species, we start realizing that it's, yeah, all right, guys, it's time to stop fucking around. Like this isn't about you printing money and fucking doing whatever. This is, this is do or die time. And if we are on a team, we are not fucking around and we are taking ourselves seriously as a species, let's go. We can fucking harness the universe. We're the masters of the universe. This is our universe. We are part of it too. It's our job to play ball with it. So we need to respect and understand it. And it's really, really hard to respect and understand what's going on. If everyone's, you know, arguing inside, it's like saying, hey, look at the look at the fireworks on New Year's Eve outside and or, you know, on Let's say, look at the fireworks outside. No, I'm too busy arguing in my house. It's like, dude, you're missing yeah. it all. Like, you know, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, being yeah. on holidays and standing in your room arguing instead of looking at the beautiful, you know, the lions outside if you're in Africa. So I don't know, on a, looking at the view out the window. But do you think that that when, I love what you said about truth. By the way, the name I drew blank on was Charles Darwin. Like, hello. Oh, <laughs> but... that dude. <laughs> yeah, smart cat. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you talk about truth, I like like what you said about internets with information. You know, we have speech, but yeah, the money. You know, I I love what you, that you said truth because I once I once tweeted like, and I think I I also heard it of someone else, or maybe I could take credit for it. But I love I love Go that you, like, Doug, tell like us. a bit Bitcoin is like 
engineered truth. Like the ultimate engineered truth. It's just That's the only thing it is. That's the only thing it is. Right? It's it just is this thing. Anytime yep. you look at it, anyone who looks at it, however you look at it, it's always the same thing. It's just the same thing. And the entire network, including the security and all the people and the decentralization, they make sure that it's always correct. And they are all incentivized to make sure it's correct. You have to play by the rules or you cannot benefit from the results yeah. of the rules, right? Yeah. And yeah. so it's ultimate engineered truth. And mm. when we see that, I think, you know, where, where we want to go or what you just talked about, like yeah. once you understand that, then you also don't have to worry about it and no yeah. one can do anything about it. So it just, it, yeah. it, it, it disappears in a sense, right? It moves to the background. It's not top of mind yeah. anymore. And so yeah. then you can actually look out the window <laughs> or yes, see the fireworks exactly. or see the lions yeah. because it's not, it's not, it doesn't have to occupy a space in your, in your consciousness anymore. Yes, exactly. And now your consciousness is free to roam on other things. So you can discover more creative things or whatever. Exactly. But, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's well, like the children, right? What yeah, we talked about, like exactly. you can be yeah. a child again. And, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and now let's think about that, right? So think about if you were born in, say, 1900, you get, you know, you get educated, you go to school and whatever. If you're born in the year 2000, you get educated, you go to school, you get an iPhone. I think here's a, here's a prediction. People are going to be born and because knowledge is so consolidated now that everything is a click away, like you can you, mm. you ask ChatGPT anything. So any creative kid can sit there and just ask it any question in the world and get yeah, a meaningful endlessly. amount of ac- yeah. meaningful yeah. amount of accuracy, most likely, depending on it, right? But um, so you're going to have kids. Education is not going to be a thing in existence. The only thing we'll probably get educated about is energy. So if you think coming out into the earth, right? You say you come out, you got to figure out, got to get a job do this you don't actually have to now bitcoin is a public utility that pays anyone if they know energy really well hi Mm. if you know energy better than them i'll pay you more than them and it's like really yeah i'll pay you way more like i will pay you the most amount if you know energy better than everyone else and that means energy efficiency if i can make the most efficient energy systems i will get the biggest reward from a public utility and that's the public utility is bitcoin Mm. so you're gonna have kids just like we have people that it's a very um and I know this sounds ridiculous, but much like we're going to put so much onus on energy in the future, I think we've finished information. I think we're pretty close to it. So the age of information is gone. And mm-hmm. I think we're about to migrate into the age of energy. And I think Bitcoin is that connective tissue helping us move from information to energy as a, as a species. Um, but, you know, if you think about it. But as an will, incentive or an enabler or an uh, accelerator. An enabler, like, so so mm-hmm. it. Well, Bitcoin is, um, you know, if we if we're sort of information is so arbitrary, which is what we've realized, it can be this, yeah. it can be that, it can be whatever, but it doesn't matter. So now we're so focused on what matters, purposeful mm. things, and we look at Bitcoin because it's expensive and it's hard to use, and Bitcoin's so valuable. We know that any time someone is making a transaction on it, it's a purposeful event. Like, I don't know when the last time, unless you're spamming people with, you know, wallet of Satoshi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I agree. You have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's everything. That proof of work. It represents something. Yes. It it is a a very value. Yeah. Exactly. It's something that happened. And now we can tether that behavior to something that happened offline. Right. So it's like Mm. some moment on this chain, which is this digital ledger of numbers, it's got some level of influence in its physical reality. So let's say, I'll give you a perfect example. Let's say tomorrow Satoshi's coins move to Coinbase. I gar- I don't have a time machine yet, but I guarantee you with my hand on my heart that there will be an article about it. It will be trending on Twitter. It will be an article in mm-hmm. Coindesk. It will be an article in the block. And people are like, yeah. oh, how could you know that? It's like, no, read the tea leaves. These coins, the highest value that a wallet can have on it beyond its monetary value, the next highest thing is its days destroyed. So the higher amount of days destroyed it has, the more deterministic you can say the supply is and how unlikely something is going to move again. Like, because once it's, Mm. the trend is the friend. So once you start having a really high amount of days destroyed, it gets more and more likely that they're never going to change. And I think that's sort of now when you have, the higher that metric is on your wallet, the higher the influence is in the off, in the physical space. So it's yeah. just like if you have, there's two things. It's days destroyed and the amount of money. If you have lots of money, 
you get a tweet, whale moved one trillion, you know, dollars worth of Bitcoin to <laughs> yeah. Coinbase. Cool. Yeah. But it's like, you know, a wallet that hasn't moved coins since the first Genesis block. Just move yeah. things. That well, is there like, is someone there. Something is happening. Yes, exactly. And that's the yeah. thing. Yeah. That's yeah. the yeah. thing. Yeah. And yeah. so you, you try and look at how, well, how do these things, how entangled are is the physical and the non-physical between Bitcoin? And I think well, it's, it's also something as, that's only possible with Bitcoin, actually, uh, to have that transparency and see everything, everything that is everything everywhere not only all happening, space. but all, also what did not happen and for how long and from when and yeah. all these things yeah that that yeah. still actually surprises me daily sometimes when i see these uh people tweet out these stats like uh an app you know blockchain analysis whatever yeah. and i think like this is the only thing for which this is possible the, the yeah. whole heritage the whole uh provenance all the everything you can see everything and anything yeah. else that's regarded as money or a store of value or whatever, like you can actually not. Well, maybe homes come closest yeah. in some sense or something. But... but even that, it's all just everything is ruggable because now exactly. we realize yeah. <laughs> there's always people in between. Yeah. Everything yeah. is yeah. ruggable. Yeah. And it just means not like, uh, give it to me, it's mine, like screw the government. Because I actually, in my head, I actually really like government because I think they've done a really good job to do their best without all the information we have now. It seems obvious to us now, but at the time, they're sort of like trying to figure mm -hmm. out how to make it work. And I give them a the benefit of the doubt anyway. Um, but, you know, in this point, it's like, why would you... People want sovereignty. People, like, the, the, the soul yearns for it, right? I think, and I think you know, who people are become purpose comes after independence, I think, and solitude. And so that sovereignty is part of that solitude process. If you look at, you know, great creatives over history, they've always been obsessed with solitude, like just because solitude is no distractions. It's just you and your thoughts. So look, I'm pretty sure you're going to find out what your purpose is more likely than sitting at a cafe drinking a Pepsi Max. Like, you know, I'm pretty sure that's not going to be the way that you go, oh, okay. Like, you're going to need, firstly, <laughs> suffering, like, in your diet. If you've got lots of suffering in your, you know, like, hardship, that's going to create a huge amount of, uh, I would say, self-understanding, let's say, because you see how you go through battles and, you know, you mm. build your confidence based on how you can react to hard times or whatever, like, things like that. Um and it doesn't mean you have to, you don't have to react perfectly to everything. It just, it helps you create your identity. Who am I? Am I the guy that screams fuck when he stubs his toe really loudly and doesn't care if his neighbor's kids wake up? Or am I the guy who goes, mm -hmm. you know, like everyone's different, but we only <laughs> yeah, know who yeah, yeah. we are from all of our interactions in the same way mm -hmm. that you couldn't prove to me who you are. I would tell you who you are because you, um, you, you don't declare so identity is not something you declare it's something that's a sign so i know you think oh no that's me i'm telling you i'm me well no if i've got a machine that can produce two of you identically the only way i'm going to find out who's who is if i ask you questions and you satisfy them in my mind so if there's yes. two of you sitting there i might pick the wrong one because the wrong one answered the contextual questions better than you did um and so it just gets very it gets quite mm -hmm. scary, you know, when we take our memories for granted, um, it can get very scary because if you lose those memories or those thoughts, you might not ever be able to say them or they might not ever be able to be heard because, I don't know. Anyway, it's it's, it's interesting stuff, but I think, um, yeah, it's super interesting. This how is does the best this, how, hole in yeah, 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 but how, how does this tie into, I heard you talk before about, you know, self-transformation, etc. This is basically what you're talking about also, right? When, because it doesn't change. So I, like if you look at like, let's say we are influenced from our environment, just say hypothetically, we and mm -hmm. I think we, I think we absolutely are, it's a no-brainer, but let's say you've got a different opinion. But he, humor me for a second. If we're influenced from our environment, you have never seen anything in history with your own eyes that doesn't change. And this is the first thing that you've seen that doesn't change. Mm. You can't. So it's like that to me, it's all, it's all consuming. It's like saying there's an, that, that is an alien. Like if there was an alien that landed on earth, one dude, everyone would basically be like, they would want to know every single piece of information about every yeah, single exactly. thing. So yeah. Bitcoin's the same thing. It's like, he's the only, he's one of one. 
why the fuck wouldn't I want to know this dude back to front? Like, he's amazing. Oh, like, it's amazing. And it's like, well, what properties does it have? And it's like, well, it doesn't change. It's like, oh, cool. It likes proof of work. So it likes to work for its food. You know, it's like if it's an entity, a species, it works for its food. And that's, mm-hmm. and the food is the work. Um, or no, it, you know, the work is the work. The food is the, the food is the, the energy. Work. The energy, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you start, it, it's one of one. And so now you put it in a category of its own. And now I thought the easiest way to think about it is like Satoshi gave this, gave us his sort of uh, child and he's gone now for whatever reason, but he's given us his child and it's our obligation to just honor the wishes of whatever he said when he left. It's not our job to fix shit because I don't know if you've noticed in humanity, we try and fix things and we're really fucking terrible at it because we usually make the problem worse. Yeah. I don't know. I really rarely point to anything that we've ever done that hasn't. Done well, that. I, th- I think that's what we talked about in the beginning that uh, yeah. I, I don't know what the English word, uh, word is, but it's kind of like what, what I said about, you know, with the money, we can fix everything, etc. Like we have that tendency, but I love how in Bitcoin actually... Mm. And and although there's discussions, obviously, but I think like the 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 ethos or like the center of this thing, not the belief, but I think the understanding mm. that is like in general, people who see Bitcoin see that too, and and they yeah. want to uphold that in a sense, right? Yeah. It's not, and and actually anyone who wants to change it or whatever, like they can actually do it. Mm. So. And that's funny because then I think you get to the proof of work step instantly. Like, okay, um, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Like, if if I see people on Twitter, like, uh, say, oh, uh, I don't know, comment on Bitcoin, and then I think, yeah. like, well, are you sh- are you short? No. Okay, your opinion is worthless. Do you think mm. uh, this uh, application of blockchain and proof of work, blah blah, blah if that sucks, well, here's the code. Good luck. Yeah. Are you doing that? You know, Greenpeace. Yeah. Are you doing that? <laughs> no. Right? Are you doing it? No. So then it's worthless. And I love I love that mechanic of yeah. of the whole proof of work ethos is that you can actually change it. If you don't, then you're talking you're talking trash. Like you're not yeah. following up with your words. So you yeah, yeah. have to. And I think that's like one of the biggest lessons in Bitcoin is that adopting really adopting a proof of work ethos in in oh, how you operate or how you live for life yeah. and stuff. Yeah. It's discipline that it's exhibited. But here's the thing, because what Bitcoin's actions are only based on the node operators. And so it's like it's its discipline is exhibited through the firmness and the understanding that node operators have. Because Bitcoin doesn't mm. change because the node operators say, No, I'm not changing. And that that's sort of this weird part where you go, Wow, people are really that respectful. There is hope in that respectfulness yes. of yes. the protocol yes. because we yeah. usually see people, everyone wants to get their dirty fucking hands on it. Everyone needs to change it for self-interest. Self-interest it's is a like, collective incentive to of course, keep it like it's this. Like, and this yeah. is a group project. Like this is Satoshi's baby and we're all doing a group assignment on planet Earth. You remember <laughs> yeah, exactly. you do yeah. group assignments? It's the same thing. It's a big group yeah. assignment. And he's like, hey, guys, don't fuck up. Please get me an A. And we're like. Well, it's funny we'll because it's without a, instruction. It's well, it's I want to say it's without instruction. Yeah. It's with a description, but you have to, uh, yeah, process that in your mind a certain way before you decide yourself if you want to be in a group project, right? So yeah, it's not, exactly. Exactly. No one and forces Satoshi, you to be in a group project or whatever. And, like it's yeah. your yeah. And Satoshi knew that and he didn't want to force people into a group project so i'll tell you how you force someone you give them satoshi invented irreversible digital money if you invent irreversible digital money the people that need that porn sites gambling sites you could make that a billion dollar business in a month now you could make it a billion dollar business or instead of taking it to porn and gambling sites you could go to um the cryptographers and say hey this is going to be really special in the future but please nurture it and 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 keep it pure because they mm. know that the incentives of the cryptographers, if they like it, they're there to work 
because they like it, not because of the carrot that comes at the end of the work, mm. which is like, you know, like the cryptographer's like, oh, this is cool. Just like someone, when you like doing something. Like genuine, like, yeah. They're genuine. Yeah. It's like it's like, mm. it's like a kid playing with Lego. He doesn't think he's building something. He's like, this is cool. It's a pro, like, you know, he's having fun. And that's where mm. the cryptographers are like, wow, this is new tech. We haven't, haven't seen this before. So they're a safer place to park it for longevity than putting it into the hands of perverted incentives. You know what I mean? Yeah. These yeah, guys yeah, are just yeah. Well, it was like aligned incentives from the start. I think like perverted incentives are well ab- abundant in the in the in the current That's the only system, thing that right? Exists. It's the only thing yeah, that exactly. Exists. Yeah. 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 From yeah. the start also. Yes. Right? So yeah. there was no noble or genuine start. It obviously serves the people who came up with it and i think that's also why it's so amazing that Mm. whoever or whatever which group uh, satoshi is that like that 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 they are not there like what a um how do you say what a what a what a selfless act you know it's amazing 100 percent, 100 percent. i think so too i think so too and it's like it just that it's it it sets (laughs) dude this is we're seeing what this sets like we're seeing in real time human being or an entity set an example of behavior yeah, exactly. that other people want to exhibit yes yes in a really grand way and this is you know the grandest almost the grandest, right? Right? It's, it's, it's how like we how people communicate with each other yeah yeah it's like the dude that made yeah. this money system that solves heaps of problems he thought yeah, this is gone and people, <laughs> yeah he's gone and he thought this way fyi it's like all right, well, whatever. He's thinking better. He's solving a lot of problems. I probably could learn something from his way of thinking, you know, exactly, or their yeah. way of thinking. So I think it's really interesting. Um, I don't even think we know how many problems it's solved. And I mean that so honestly. I think mm. literally like, oh, my God. Ugh, yeah, I just I start. You, It's like a religion, right? It feels like a religion because – and people just feel like that's a dirty word. It's like, well, no, fucking, what is a religion? It's a set of values that you adhere to. Oh, we're in a cult. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah but, like, but I agree. Uh, for me, it's really, I, I call it more, it's more like spiritually or something almost. Like yeah. it frees, it frees your consciousness from yeah. lots of things, actually. Yeah. And what it is, everything is just a protocol. This is what we've got to realize. It's protocol mm-hmm. is a series of steps to do something or whatever. It's like, or reproduce yes. something. It's like, that is all religion is. Hey, you religious? Uh, no. Yeah, do or X, Y, Z, or don't do that you yeah. adhere to? Mm. Yes. Okay, well, it's the same. You don't need a dude in a white cloak in the sky to be a religion, like, or, you know, or Muhammad or anyone. It's like, well, it's no, something you like, believe in and want to follow. It's something right? that you believe yeah. in that represents a broader blanket than of, of what it's a behavior you'd love more people to have, maybe, or something. I don't know, but it's, mm. um, but it is interesting. But yeah, it does feel like a religion, but it feels like a religion because for finally, for once in our lives, we've got a set of values, you know, because it yep. feels like the only value that the West has had is consumerism. It's like here, the more shit you buy, the more, sh- you know, the more value you're getting. It's like, I don't know. It just feels like I've been sold a bit of a turd sandwich on consumerism and capitalism. Like it's tr- garbage. Like I think, I don't know, it's weird, but it just feels like you've totally missed the whole essence of life. Yes, Not like, oh, yeah, is capitalism better than communism? What the fuck is an ism, dude? Who the fuck in the universe knows what an ism is? No one. And you guys are fucking pulling each other's dicks trying to figure out which one's the best. Dude, mm. there's aliens building intergalactic fucking black hole eaters, and you're sitting there wondering, oh, no, nah, I'm all right. No, nah, I'm all right in my arbitrary opinion. Like, let's get to fucking work, guys. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. yeah. No, 100% agree. Yeah. Dude, who the fuck's in charge here? And this is the problem when you have no one in charge with no leadership, which is why Satoshi's probably a good chance. These religious deities and stuff, they're... Satoshi, Muhammad, Jesus Christ, those kind of people that have a huge audience of influence or potential scope of influence. Like those dudes are that sort of the the leadership qualities. But human humanity doesn't have like a CEO or a like leader of earth, which is mm-hmm. retarded because if we actually are on the same team, which I'm pretty sure we are, then we all should be sort of like, okay, what's the game plan here, guys? Like there's eight billion of us. What's the game plan? Are we all gonna talk to mm-hmm. each other and figure out how we're gonna fucking we should be eating suns and solar systems. Like, is that technology? Exactly, to- exactly. Yeah, I love, I knew like, you were going to f- talk about this. Oh, <laughs> well, it's like, my thing, it's like, and I think if, who do if we I talk have, about. Who do I have to pour cold water on to get them to wake up and be like, 
Oh yeah, fuck. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it doesn't matter um, if I buy yeah, the yeah. purple or the red shoes. It's like no fucking yeah. doesn't matter, you idiot. It's, it's not a problem. Uh, yeah, it's not. It's yeah. not. It's not a thing. No, I. I um, we we more... DM'd before, right? About oh, yeah, yeah. like the different uh, like documentaries and stuff. Like I'm so into this. Like I, I find it fascinating that more and more people like kind of look at the world in this way, right? Like I think that's a good thing, but mm. also it feels like. And also kind of sad sometimes where I think like, oh, we are so far away from this. We are so far away from actually sometimes I think like, why aren't we all thinking about the following question every day together? Yeah. What is going on here? Like, where do what we come from? Important. What is more important? Like, <laughs> yeah, no, right. no, no, we are, we are no, like... No, but like, what is going yeah. on here? Yeah. Like, the life, the world, yeah. the universe. Like, yeah, why yeah. aren't we thinking about that together every day, all day? Like, day. together, We're just trying, trying to, to get an answer. Out. Why are we yeah. here? Why are we here? Yeah. Why are we exactly. here? That's exactly. all I want to know. It's like, yeah. people are like, oh, you know, we're too busy, distracted being here. It's like, yeah, but Why we are far we... away from, like, if you think about the origin, right? Like, okay, you have hunter-gatherers, they need to survive, right? That's the primal instinct is, okay, we, we, yeah. we should not die. And every child that gets born, they shouldn't die either. So at some point, when you have, yeah. like, enough food and shelter and you're protected from, you know, yeah. nature, and you have... it makes rational sense to me that mm. the first thought of in, in your free time <laughs> would be, when you look up and you'll be like, what? Okay. <laughs> what is going now on? Now what do I do? You know, like, yeah. No, like I need, to, I need to look at it. Like, does it change? How long do yeah. I have to look at it before something changed? Well, turns out, you know, I don't mm. know if you ever heard about what, a great, what the great year is. The no. great, so we have a day, we have a year, right? We have the great year, which is mm. 24,000 years, how, um, how the earth turns in a certain way yeah. in, our, in our solar system. And that actually shows the, um, what's that called again? Like the precession, like how the how the earth kind of changes, the, like the wobble of the earth. You can yeah. only you can only see that after twenty four thousand years. And we yeah. know that like a lot of old civilizations had knowledge of the stars, which means this was like multi 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 generational project or something. Mm. Yeah, over twenty four thousand years, so that you can see one of these. Yeah precession loops yeah, yeah. of course you are thinking about that because yeah. you want to understand like where where, where did i get dropped like what, you know yeah, that's, it's, and it's just like respawning yeah. in Fortnite, being like where am i like, yeah what you, like what is what this world I, I, it's mind-blowing and i think i think yeah it's just i I, it, I think it's almost hyperbolical when we talk about and i say this a lot but maybe it's just true or yeah. like that that is going to be like this like if we fix the money like how we exchange value with each other and we are yeah. more conscious we are less worried about the blue shoe or red shoe or orange shoe but we are looking outside and yeah. finding other people that are looking outside who are just as interested in yeah. the world and what is going on then we could get there i think it will take lots of years, you know, for us to go back to that consciousness. But yeah, that would be amazing. It'll take a long time. It'll take a long yeah. time. But it's almost like we have to go back in time with our consciousness. Because if you think about exactly yeah. our consciousness are very poisoned right now. Like if you could see our consciousness, it's it's not being generated enough internally. It's being pushed on us in like externally. Mm. As we're back in the day, like people could think clearer. Like you would look yes. up at the stars and you would think, what the fuck am I doing here? What's going on? And you hear some dude like tinking some rocks together over in Egypt or something. You're like, <laughs> what is happening? But imagine the yeah. the luminosity going to bed at night and looking up at the stars because the, uh, the sky would be so clear. It would be yeah. like a movie to them. That was the mm. most entertaining, you know, like. Exactly. Oh, yeah. You know, like look at when you could look forever, you know. And, yeah. and so, but now because and we're so. recognized uh, yeah, the, they draw patterns. the so, different stars. You know, they draw, yeah. they, you know, you've got like the the stars in the sky. And so to them, this is something I find quite interesting. You know how it's like, oh, you know, there's Gemini. And they say it's like just, it's like a very small represent. It's basically a very pixelated image of something. Mm. It's like, oh, there's the lion. And it's like, duh, duh, duh. Eight duh. stars or something. Yeah, it's yeah. like eight stars. You're yeah. like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of. Okay, I'll give you that. But if you mm. think about, remember the first Mario Brothers when we played it or the first, you know, Mario Kart. We used yeah, yeah. Or Mortal Kombat. Oh, my God, it's so real. And now you look at the graphics and you're like, 
how did I think that PlayStation had real graph? Like, you know, when PlayStation came mm-hmm. out or whatever, it used yeah, to look yeah. real. So imagine to them, that's like... Yeah, the imagination, we look, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. we look at the stuff because the imagination's filling the image. So when we look at the stars, we look at it like we're looking at, you know, um, Super Mario Brothers 1 on Nintendo. Like it looks like there's nothing up there, there's pixelators or whatever. But when mm. they looked at it, they were like, oh, my God, and they would draw it because their imagination is filling so much up. Yeah, exactly. It would look yeah. so real. Um, I find that quite interesting. But, you know, now if you think about, like, um, deities, right? Like, so let's say Jesus Christ. So back in the day, you know, if he's a – if you just think about consciousness as being an understanding of your surroundings, right? Like, and the more understanding of your surroundings, the, uh, the higher consciousness you have, and the mm-hmm. broader your surroundings, the higher the consciousness. Yeah, you know, like people and get surroundings bored. can go to co- yeah. cosmos level, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. You can yeah, expand yeah, to yeah. understand yeah. everything in the co- no. So here's the thing: mm-hmm. if you have a unified field theory, then that expands your understanding of everything in the cosmos and how particles work to it exact to the walls, basically, like from the windows to the walls, whatever little John said. But basically, yeah. it's like it expands your consciousness as much as possible. So if you think about people back in the day, like these Jesus Christ people and all these like amazing, you know. Uh, historical figures, they they very well could have been normal individuals that were just you know we we have def- more tuned deformed, in right more tuned yeah. in like we have autistic mm. savants now like if you look at Daniel Tammet he could fastest person to learn Icelandic language two weeks it's the hardest language on the planet to learn recited pi to ten thousand digits took him four and a half hours he had three bananas two bottles of water during the process thirty eight people checking him and this is off the top of his head now that's superhuman to us, relative to us. Mm, but that's I a agree. link. Our brains are ca- capable of all of that. So imagine you get these people born with what we see as a deformity, which is it isn't, it's a gift. Um, but we see, like, let's say some person back yeah. in the day, they might have been born with a very high level of consciousness or very in-tune understanding. Mm. So all these people are walking around like, uh, like cavemen or sort of not really good. And there's dudes like, hey, Dude, don't, hey, smile. You look better when you – and he starts saying all these things and he constantly is being right. He's like, yeah. oh, no, don't stand he's under the tree. He's changing lives, right? Yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, don't I stand agree. under the tree. The apple's going to hit you on the head. And they go, oh, mm. fuck. And he goes, wow, who's this dude? He keeps getting it right. And he might just be like us, like a logical cat. He's like, nah, man, don't – what the tree was falling on you. you got to move. Duh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's the thing. But if you want to see – it's everything's not obvious, though. This is the thing. Like, watch on – go on YouTube and go, high schoolers, Anal- reading analog clock. Hmm. They don't know how to read an analog clock. Have yeah. you seen that? No, no, no. no. This is a. I, it was mind blowing. I looked at it, and they're well, like, "This is like where uh, point uh, Texas and this or isn't point an, out Australia, this, right?" So this yeah. is this isn't a this isn't an insult to them. It just shows that all we are is pattern matching. Like mm. intuition doesn't really exist. We're just pattern matching and repetition because it's not like. There's no intuition to read a clock. Like these kids, if you've never, if you haven't learned how to read a clock, you're not going to know how to read a clock. Yeah, exactly. And it's yeah. fascinating because now we don't think about that enough. We think, oh yeah, well, of course you could. It's like, no, 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 you have to learn it too. And it's funny how we take learning for granted. I think because it's actually, like fun example, I asked my my son, like, how would you um, um, express being on the phone with your hands? Oh yeah, so I'd go like that, and he'd go like this. Mm-hmm. Fascinating. Yeah. Okay, so another he does thing. flat hands. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, you're like, yeah, yeah. it's sort of like, why is the floppy disk the save icon? You yeah, know, exactly. We know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly hey, that one. Yeah, like, yeah, hey, yeah, can yeah, you yeah. wind your window up for me? Right? Do you say, mm. "Oh, wind your window up"? I don't know if that's an expression, but yeah, that's yeah, always click on the yeah. button. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but now exactly. it's like, yeah, you, it's just a button. You don't wind anything. And so mm. I've seen, like, I saw my younger cousins. They were opened a magazine at uh, like this dinner, and they were using it. And they like, I watched them go like this. Trying to pinch it to on the zoom paper. In on, on the paper. Oh shit! <laughs> and I was like, when I saw that, I was like, no, no way! And it was like one of those aha moments that, oh my god, I'm old as fuck now. <laughs> Part of my language. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's talk about one last thing, and I have a final question for you. But yeah. I wanted to talk about you're totally into thermodynamics, but and also I wanted to ask about. The law of conservation of energy, like why is that important to Bitcoin and how is a law of nature applied within a digital technology? How how mm. can we make sense of that? So the digital technology 
is powered by all the mining operations and all the in, yeah, that's it only succeeds because of all the energy being poured into it so if we think of every block being mined as an amount of energy that it took to find that mm-hmm. number think of energy like layers like we're looking at a cross section of the earth you know the sediment layers the different like oh there's grass mm-hmm. on the top and then there's rock and then there's this and then da, 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 down to all the way to lava that's what this work is. The, this work is like piling on more work, just like diamonds are made under pressure, mm-hmm. you know, like lots yes. and lots of yes. pressure. And it's gold. exactly the same and, thing. Yes. Yeah, yes, the, tra- exactly. the transactions, yeah. we mine a block and then that block goes down and now all the miners yes. are working and then yes. that goes down. And so what we're doing is sort of compressing things down mm. further into the earth. And so with, with energy, it's got to go somewhere. Just like, you know, just like when you're building the pyramids, these dudes were sweating all day moving these big ass rocks. Well, now to move those rocks later, they're there. You, their energy is encoded. Yeah, they spend the same amount of energy to move them back, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. It's like that's encoded into there. Um, and so just mm. like all the energy commitments that have been made by all the miners are provable yeah. commitments, not through only the numbers, not only through the mathematics we can prove it based on you know the ha- leading zeros, um, but we can cross reference that with the energy grid. Um, the history of the energy, like the energy grid, uh, like let's say logs to prove yeah, that, yeah. yes, Just the usage, if, yes. Yeah. If we had a thermal footprint of the earth, we could identify all the thermal footprint that is matching this hash footprint, let's say, um, yeah. very easily. And I find that we're going to start respecting that link a bit more, I think. And that, because, you know, it's like not your keys, not your coins. And it's sort of like, well, not your keys, not you. Now, in the AI world, if you're not cryptographically you right now, I'm talking to you now, but in the future, I'm not going to be talking to you. You're going to have a fake version of you that's chat GVT because it's answering every question because it's scanned everything you've ever written ever and it's impersonating you to pretend to be me so that you can now sit out in the pool drinking a pina colada or whatever you want to drink. So what's real and what's not is going to become very hard to distinguish and that's why cryptographic keys are going to be the only mechanism of proof for things because they require work to uh, to generate them. So mm. I can say it's not plain text. It's like my computer. And when I say work, that like calculation. The, the calculation was mm. because the calculation that you made is directly linked to a spark to, that ran yes. through your computer's yes. circuit, yeah. which is directly yeah. linked to the energy socket that is the cables coming out of, which is directly linked to the power station. So you see the Bitcoin, it kind of crawls out of a digital world like a snake and it creeps into your computer and out into the energy field. Mm. And that's how I think about Bitcoin is like, it's like the longer we've got this tap connecting Bitcoin to our energy field, the the more it is going to get entangled and start like consuming more energy. And now if we think about it, I think Bitcoin's only goal is 100% total addressable market of energy. Like if Bitcoin's mm. got one North Star, that's it. Not displaced money, oh, not But change, energy not is change everything, world, right? Like All energy. that bullshit, anything to do with money is totally unrelated because energy is the root of money. So mm. if it is the heaviest energy ledger in the world, it will be the heaviest money in the world. Like. Yeah. That's just no two ways. Because money about it. is energy, right? It's 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 it, technology the only reason, to change energy reason, between us. Exactly. The yeah. only reason yeah. we have money is an arbitrary way of slicing up the finite amount of energy that we have on our planet, or we believe yeah. we have. So if we had infinite money, we're going to have infinite energy, basically. But there um, is, yeah. I mean, sorry. So if we have infinite energy, we don't have money, and so that's basically we. If we if we all knew how to produce our own energy. Forget the politics of it all, but just think conceptually. If we all know how to produce our own energy and I produce everything myself, I ain't going to ask you for anything because I can do it all myself and I've got machines. Okay, so uh, trick or challenging question. uh, You are Tesla uh, adept as well. If free energy exists, we don't need Bitcoin. Uh, If free energy exists, we don't. you, You can have Bitcoin if you want, but. That's a redundant system now. Right? Then there's no... Yeah, you don't need it because my, Bitcoin is the evolution of money. But money mm. money dies eventually. Like right now, money in the US dollar is like terminally ill, but money is an arbitrary premise. And it, everything is arbitrary unless it's energy. That's why everything is a proxy or representation of energy. 
and time. So everything has got a currency of time because it's really mm -hmm. scarce. Yeah. So um, how would we make decisions if we lived forever? Our decision making would be far different to us now. Mm. In the same way, how would we how would we uh, function as a species uh, if we didn't have money? It would probably change all of our thoughts and change. You know, we'd be much more aligned, firstly, because we have no self interest cock blocking me from trying to. Basically, I'm trying to shit on you, and you're trying to shit on me because I've got self interest that you might be taking from me, and that's mm. what happens in a finite resource world. But again, the universe and the galaxies and all that, it's huge. They're big storming balls of magnetism spewing out everywhere. It's like we're bathing in a, it's like the ocean is made of petrol. That's what it is. Like, think about that. The ocean made of petrol and you're on a boat and you've run out of fuel and you're looking for fuel. That's the equivalent. Earth is a boat in the middle of the ocean and the ocean is basically gigantic pools of magnetic storms and all we need to do imagine if you had a lighter and you're on your boat and you go holy shit or you just you stuck a straw out the side of your boat to siphon it into your tank that's literally what the earth is going to be end up that's how it ends up happening like for us as a species we'll start tapping into that sort of energy field the higher energy field like tesla talked about this quite a lot um which is sort of like we've gone down this path of fiat money and I'd like to say fiat physics almost, which is like a lot of the quantum mechanics and all this sort of stuff where we think it's the highest field or the highest order of, you know, understanding in our scientific brains. Mm -hmm. Look, I might be wrong here, but I'm going to go on and say quantum mechanics is a shit coin. Um, and I'll say <laughs> that because Good. it's a true story. And here's, yeah. here's an example, if you guys want one. Someone makes a huge breakthrough in anything, Satoshi, right? Satoshi makes a huge breakthrough. What happens straight after the breakthrough happens? All the hanger on is, oh, it's this, but it's better. Oh, we've done, we've copied mm. Bitcoin, but we've tweaked this. We've changed the speed. We've changed the supply. We've changed, we've fixed it. Dude, quantum mechanics is fixing it. It's exactly that. Like Tesla mm. had no bar of any of the quantum mechanics, really. Like he was always a step ahead of it. Like he Tesla just knew what the field was. So the field is like if the universe is our 3D universe, there's an energy field in which that sits, which is sort of like a fifth dimension. So Tesla's like, just like anyone studying cryptography, it's like your public key is not the important thing. Your private key is. Just like in Earth, if the whole universe has a private key that's coming from a higher field, then we may as well study that first because that's going to show us how the rest of everything is influenced. Yeah. And so that's what Tesla studied was the field and Einstein studied the universe. And that's where we've got this mixture. So all these people studying the universe are like, oh, Einstein was sort of right, but like quantum mechanics has this and that. And Einstein was always like, nah, dude, like this shit looks like deterministic more, like, you know, it's not so statistical and probability orientated and shit. But all these dudes are trying to make names for themselves and trying to answer questions that no one asks. Like half of the shit in quantum physics is... Like, honestly, it looks like Cardano, like, like all that kind of shit, like Cardano <laughs> and like Definity, literally. It's like, and people are like, oh, yeah, but what about that theorem? But isn't that a distraction like, dude, from theorems, the real thing? Well, dude, all these theorems that people make up and talk about, they're like, yeah, I found something in math, so it's a whole theorem now. It's like, it's the equivalent of like Vitalik starting Ethereum and saying, oh, <laughs> this is the Vitalik chain. And then Justin Sun starting Justin chain. Everyone names mm -hmm. their theorems after themselves. If you think of the theorem like the chain that's improving mathematics, these theories, oh, I've got a quantum theory, I've got this. No one has done shit in a hundred years, basically. That's so what are they a distraction of then? What are they, what, what, what is the thing that they they're should be studying? They're high on their own farts. They're, they're basically, mm -hmm. they're too naive. But what naive. should they be studying? What, what should it be? Nikola Tesla's work. Everyone on earth that has any interest in energy at all, there, this is, this is not even a debate. If you're a physicist, if you want a Nobel prize, meet me in my house and I'll tell you why you're wrong. Like this is not even questionable. He is the goat. Him, him and most of the old school thinkers are way better. And Einstein was sort of, Einstein knew this. Well, Einstein, Einstein looked at Tesla. Tesla looked at Newton, I think, right? Well, Tesla looked at Newton and stuff, but Dude, Tesla was drawing everything in his mind because if you know cause and effect so well because you understand the universe, how well it works, right? If you had a master equation for the universe, you understood, then you would understand cause and effect very well, right? And you, if you could do that on the micro scale where you could almost say, 
you can predict the future in a way because you understand all the different permutations that can happen. Um, and I think, look, if we wanted to take, if we were taking energy seriously, which I know no one is, it's if we were taking it seriously, we would all have like humanity would stand still for a moment and read Nikola Tesla's work until every single person that is paid by anyone for anything energy related would do that. And then in five years time, we would probably be, I don't know, masters of the master, the masters of the universe, basically. And so that makes me think, um, yeah, I just find it. It's so interesting that he never got the dignification. Like he didn't get dignified. His work was so mm -hmm. intimidating almost. Um, and, but the fact is he was like, nah, dude, it's gotta be simple. Like the universe is so complex that it has to have a simplicity to it. Mm. You can't not because it's just too many arbitrary chance things happening. And so basically it was like, nah, be nah, hard cool. also to discover it. And it, if it's, well, I don't know. I'm just thinking like it, yeah. it should also not be hard to discover it, like how it but works, because think about it's the, the origin of all it the should, other stuff. Exactly. Everyone should be yeah. able, it should be fair for everyone, right? And so there's no mm. pre mine. If the universe is fair, and what does the universe have in common with Bitcoin? 100% uptime kind of thing, like this idea that it doesn't <laughs> yeah. go down. So if you yeah. think about the universe, let's say you're sitting there, it's a job interview and you've got to work for the universe. It's like, and you're an engineer or something, you'd be like, oi, who the fuck made this? Like, do I get to meet the dude that made this or anything? Because I've never seen a distributed system that has 100% uptime. And I just wanted to give them a really big congrats on, uh, on making that. And that's basically God or whoever that made a universe. It's had a 100% uptime. I'm still here. Mm. You're still here. It's still here. Like, is that also what you would say? I, I tweeted this last week. Like I never grew up like religious. I always thought I was like atheist or maybe agnostic or something. But the more I, well, also <laughs> dove into Bitcoin, but I'm also more into back. the yeah. into the universe and all these things. Yeah. Like uh, j literally, what you just said, it's a yeah. system uh, up until like the highest, like cosmos, universe level, all the yeah. way down to DNA and stuff. Like it's a system, and a system has to be engineered, right? Yeah. Yeah. A, a system cannot be random, especially not when on multiple planes of the system there are parts working together yeah, right they're all like it's like I'll give you, so, yeah so it's designed it's, it's designed so someone something or some who or so, so, yeah something but, or somewhat but, but, whoever yeah. when we think it about, has to be designed right yeah when we think about god making the universe or something like we used to think like okay and then birds could eat fish and it's like oh yeah that'd be heaps good and then the fish could eat other fish. Oh, yeah. And then what if it rains as well? And then that transfers some of the particles from the water mm. down to the... Okay, this Some is trees cool. turn around, right? The, the, yeah. the... And then we have this other thing like wind. It's sort of yeah. like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like the elements of the distribution channel for the equation. So you've got... Well, if it's all random, it also has to go wrong at the edges. Of course, 100%, right? Some, 100%, or, or 100%. in multiple places on multiple yes. levels as well, and that's not really how it how it works. So, yeah, it's designed. Yeah, that's kind of like uh, I had that realization. I think, but actually, but you know just what? like a if, few if, weeks if, ago. If, if this recording lives on forever, like you know, because right now I think right now we can't understand Tesla's work because Tesla didn't have a social media account posting all his shit. Right? Like mm. it's, it's annoying like that. But think about how much clearer the past will be to the future, in the future. And what I mean is like, we have these handwritten half-baked coffee stain notes on what Einstein thought. But imagine if we had, you know, 600 hours of interviews with him. Or so, you know, like it's like, fuck, mm -hmm. what we could learn. The lessons Just a download, take. the real download, oh, yeah. Unbelievable. So I think the future is going to have a better time with history than we did because they will have a more pure historical ledger. Um, as we're ours, full of ambiguity, full of he said, she said, full of, mm. you know, different things. But, you know, moving forward, the coordination behind, you know, the Bitcoin block height is the timestamp of humanity. Like that is, that is humans. If, if you have a latitude and longitude for Earth, then where on Earth is it? But when in the universe is it? So the Z axis would be the block height. Um, yeah. And so that's how I think, I feel like we're going to converge on a unified clock which is the block height. And that's going to be because machines and humans will be too entangled and too hard to sort of dis, uh, determine who's what. So I think everyone's is that gonna... different. Is that different than what we currently use as time then? 
It is because what we're going to do is say, my local time doesn't matter. Mm. The global clock matters more than me. And once we start saying that as a species where we operate on the global clock more than we operate on the local stuff, I think that's going to be really influential because machines are going to sort of increase the population of the planet basically from like 8 billion to like probably 14 billion. And when I say machines, I mean any sentient, anything online as well, all devices, shit like that. Um, so if we think about that world, what does it look like with machines and man and how do we discern who's who? Um, hmm. Yeah, I just think, I think that's becomes a sort of forgot where I was going with that, but basically the population is going to increase astronomically. Um, <laughs> the machines are probably going to be the last ones using money, actually. We'll, we'll stop using money before machines, I reckon. Hmm. Um, I'm interested to see where that where that goes. Yeah. I, I love I love this man. We went all yeah. over the place ju uh, just sorry, as I expected. No, later. I love it. No, no, no. I love it. I think we can talk for way, way, yeah. way longer. Um yeah. I want to finish with my last question. I ask everyone the same thing. Yeah. What's a core belief that you will never let go? Prime numbers are the most important thing that humanity will ever understand. That's not an important thing. I'll put my money where my mouth is and I'll say, I guarantee that in 20 years, that's what we all think. That's my guess. That's my guess. Awesome. Well, we have a timestamp. So yeah, in 20, bit, in 20 years, we'll, we'll check in. We'll check in. All right. Dude. Thanks, man. Um, yeah. To, to, uh, to wrap it up, like where can people follow your crazy thoughts? Yeah. Yo, dude. Oh, dude. So I put it all on GitHub for anyone to look at. Um, it's called Mike D one two three slash energy. So it's Mike D is my username. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Group. I'll link to it. I'll yeah. link to it. And yeah. I also created a chat GBT, a custom GBT with all the work in it, so you can basically. And it's got all like time locks and stuff about time. Um, Bitcoin explore, Bitcoin time lock explorer. So it's a custom GBT. Um, I'll send you a link to that if you want. It's really cool to use because yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, it's cool. For, cool fun. Anyway, um, other than that. Just come say hi to me if you see me in person. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. And uh, I think we will continue this in the future again. Definitely. So uh, keep in Thank touch. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Cheers, man. Bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, it would be amazing if you could rate, review, and subscribe on the podcast platform of your choice. It will help us educate more millennials on the importance of Bitcoin. You can follow and connect with me on Twitter. I'm Bramke. That's at B-R-A-M-K. And if you are or know someone who has an interesting perspective on Bitcoin that's worth sharing, hit me up. I read and reply to every single message. I appreciate your support and hope you'll be here for the next episode. Thanks for listening. Bye.